guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and this is Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, September 18th, 2018. I hope everyone's been having a good week. I hope everyone who lives on the East Coast that's been dealing with this hurricane is safe. And I hope, really, really hope you're not having too many problems with all that flooding. It's been strange. I've talked to a few people that live throughout Florida in the crafting community, and it's been really strange lately because we normally, when we hear about hurricanes, they're usually coming for us or somewhere along the Gulf Coast. Now, our news people here in this area, I'm over in Southwest Florida. I'm over on the Gulf Coast on the western side of Florida. And we've been hearing a lot of coverage about this hurricane. And I'm sure a lot of you across the nation have been hearing it too. But we've been hearing it on a regular throughout the day, almost as if the hurricane was coming for us. So it's been really kind of strange to be hearing about a disastrous hurricane like this and it's not actually hitting our area. And it really just shows you the difference between hurricanes and where they hit in different areas of the country. Now, a hurricane that's at a, uh, a level one hurricane is really, it's almost like a, depending on how high in that level is and where, you know, where it is, category one, somewhere in there. We, a category one is just like a summer storm for us. You get some high winds, you 50, 60 miles an hour. We see that during the summer, 70, 80 miles an hour is a little bit strong. And the rain is just, we don't really have too many problems with a storm like this, but this storm is so huge and it's moving so slowly and it just seems to be sucking all the water right out of the ocean and just smacking it into the Carolinas. And from what I've seen with that flooding, it's really scary and I feel really, I really feel for the people that are affected by that. Okay, so let's see what I've been working on this week. If you notice above my head, I did finish my gradation uh, gray shawl. I still need to go ahead and steam block it. I just have it hanging up there so that I was hoping, I was hoping gravity would take it down a little bit, but no, it's gonna need to be steam blocked. It still has a lot of area, as you can see, that it can stretch out and open up all this even work, the lace work in here, and get all that lattice looking stuff stretched out. And I need to straighten up this this uh, bind off edge. It's not, it's kind of just rolling over a little bit, but a little steam from the iron will just kind of clear that up really nicely. Now this is going to be the last time you're going to be seeing this quilt because I did finally finish my quilt. This is my Valentine's quilt. I did have to do a little patchwork on the back. I almost had enough backing fabric. I only had to put the one chunk in, so that's not too bad. And if you don't remember the pattern, this is a giant star pattern. This pattern is from the book Schnibbles 2. It's the plan C, but instead of using the charm squares, it uses the 10 inch squares. I'll show more details on my Whip It Wednesday, but I just meandered all around it, just stippled everywhere. I used pink thread when I quilted it. This was pretty much the last thing I was able to do on my brother's sewing machine. That that poor thing, it's been having, it's been struggling for a couple years. I took it into the shop a year or two years ago just to see, because it was squeaking a lot, so I thought maybe it had to, I can't oil it myself, it has to go in to be oiled. So I thought maybe if you put some oil in there, maybe it needed to have some lint cleaned out of it that I couldn't see, even though I used a little vacuum to try to get it all out. But it, it squeals loudly. So I took it into the shop and he said to repair it would actually cost more than a new machine. Some of the parts were over $350 to fix the machine. And I thought, no, that's crazy because for that price you can get a new brother machine. It may not be a big fancy one, but you can still uh, get a computerized machine. So I've been using it and it would squeal every now and then and sometimes I can get it to calm down. I don't know why, you just kind of move the lint around inside or let it rest or something for some reason. It would squeal and then it would stop squealing and then it would squeal really bad. And now every time I use it, it squeals. So I had to go ahead and retire my favorite sewing machine. Now I have to stitch on my daughter's. I have a Singer tradition that I bought her several years ago when she wanted to start learning how to quilt with me. She learned how to quilt and then she stopped. She just likes to learn things to know the knowledge and then she doesn't continue. It's really strange. 
I totally understand it because a lot of us are multi-crafters and we kind of dabble in everything, but she just does it, learns it, and moves on. She does that with a lot of things in her life. But yeah, so now I'm, I'm stitching on that and it's a beginner's uh, sewing machine. So yeah, I've been swearing a lot just because it's different. It's a really fast machine. I was surprised at how fast it goes. Now my brother has uh, slow, medium, and fast. I always stitch on fast with the pedal all the way down. This one I don't even have to put the pedal about halfway and it goes just as fast as my brother did. But it's not an automatic computerized. The needle doesn't go automatically down. So I have to keep remembering to spin the little flywheel there to get the needle to go down. It doesn't have an automatic threader or an automatic cutter or any of those fancy things. And I really miss that little ramp that goes on the front of my machine because I don't have one that drops down into the table. So now I'm going to have to start saving up to get a new machine because while this one works great, no complaints, I'm very, very happy to have it so I can keep sewing, but it's not my next forever machine. I don't know what I want. Oh, and I want one. I do know I want one that has a drop and bob and the Singer has the one that goes in the front load. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's just, it is what it is. We all have our preferences of what we use and yeah, this one. Uh, my brother had a cartridge that you just stick your uh, your your thread in, your spool of thread, and you just pop it in the machine and it would automatically thread it and everything like this. Now I have to take it and I have to thread it through the little maze and all that. You know, big winds here. That's all it really is. Like I said, very, very grateful that I already have the machine here and I don't have to worry about it. So I just start saving up for a new one and see what I can find. I don't need one of those big fancy ones with the big quilting base that has like 250 stitches. I just, I'm thinking about a 300, maybe $500 range. I should be able to find something for what I've been looking at online. But I'm just thrilled to have this done. I do not know what my next whip is going to be, my next UFO. I do know who it's going to be for, so that should help me choose one. My kids have two couches in their living room and they already have one of my quilts on it. So now they need a quilt for the second couch. They randomly have friends that'll just pop over and visit for a while and then they end up spending the night. So they like to use the quilt to cover up with on their couch. Because even in the summer with the AC on, their, their living room gets kind of cold. They have a really nice uh, circular fan in their ceiling in the living room and it really puts down a lot of air so it's nice and cool in there. So yep, they need a nice quilt, a nice mama made quilt. I have to see what I already have for batting or if I have to go buy batting before I work on another quilt. But I have a lot of other things I have been working on this week. So if you just pop back in tomorrow for my whip at Wednesday and I'll go into detail about all those. I really don't want to ramble on and make this one too long today. I just wanted to show off my finished Valentine's quilt so nobody can tease me anymore about that. You know who I'm talking to out there. Yep, very, very pleased with this. Now I'm going to put it away because it's still not quite cold enough here. Uh, it was 90 yesterday with the heat index of 101 and today they said we're going to go up to the heat index of 105 or 108 so we definitely don't need a quilt. I don't even think the kids are going to use a quilt in their living room right now. So that's it for me. I'll be watching everyone's videos probably a little bit later this week. I have a couple busy days coming up, uh, appointments and I'm going to sneak over to my kid's house on Wednesday and do a little deep cleaning because, you know, that's what moms do, right? That's it for me this week. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!